down there is Finland. The water below is one of the 62,000 lakes that makes this one of the most unique countries in the world. Look in the forest down there, you'll probably find reindeer and also the odd rally driver or two. Because in Finland, rally driving is the national sport. And this country, with its population of 4 million, produces more champions than the rest of Europe put together. Once a year, these remarkable drivers are put on show in a rally called the Rally of the Thousand Lakes. And the incredible thing is, in the past 10 years, only once, as a foreigner, an outsider, won this event. Yet still no one has really pinpointed why it is these Finns are such brilliant drivers. Why it is they're the most exciting drivers in the world today. of one British driver, you've got to be brave to go rallying in Finland. This awe-inspiring spectacle of Finnish drivers yumping their way through forest stages is enough to send shivers down anyone's spine. For when you top a yump at more than 80 miles an hour, there's no way to go but up, offering a prayer that the road's still there when you finally come down. This is rallying in Finland, a sport of extremes, faster, harder, demanding greater courage and ability than anywhere else. And the showpiece is the 1,000 lakes. nine crews face virtually 1,000 miles of rallying crammed into 36 hours of day and night driving. The action and drama take place on 43 special stages ranging from 1 to 25 miles and it's here that seconds count for even on the longest stage only two or three seconds separate the fastest man from those bringing up the rear. The cynic could claim that the Finns and those remarkable lemmings should go hand in hand such as the seemingly blind indifference on those yumps. But like some other major international rallies, every driver has practiced before the start. And this is one reason why the Thousand Lakes is among the fastest stage rallies in the world. So unique is rallying in Finland so remote the country, it's no surprise the entries are mainly national. A handful of top crews from Sweden, Germany and Russia make up the numbers. But what about Britain? When you look at rallying in Finland and compare it with the situation in our own country, you realise the two are poles apart. Indeed, the odds are stacked so high against a British driver winning this event, you wonder if it's worth their while even bothering to turn up. But despite that fact, six British crews have surprisingly and optimistically entered this event. But you've still got to ask if they're not wasting their time and their money. Among the six, Brian Kelchert. Conditions here are more specialised than anywhere else in the world. Um, I think it's very good that they should come in, that it's important and valuable experience to be gained if one is to go into national rallying. Um, we have come with a small car um, because we hope we may win a class, um, but we would have very little chance of outright victory, even if one was in a very competitive car, because simply I haven't the experience of driving it in finished conditions. Um, I feel that we are wasting our time as far as winning the event is concerned or winning our class, but certainly the experience that we will get here will be absolutely superb. Yeah, Paul Faulkner, and another British entry, this year's safari winner, Shaker Mehta. Did he think the six British crews were wasting their time entering this Finn-dominated event? To a certain extent, yes. Uh, in the sense that they're not going to figure in the final result. So I'd be very surprised if they did. Um, this is a Scandinavian rally for Scandinavian drivers, and we're all, to a certain extent, wasting our time. <laughs> Well, 
By the end of the first night, the front runners are beginning to show. Blomqvist in the Saab number two has stolen a 30 second lead. A situation calculated to displease the Finns because he's Swedish. But second is Mackinnon showing magnificent jumping form in the escort, which keeps a slightly inebriated course bookie on the hop, for there's more to rallying in Finland than just motor cars. As Finland's night is over by three o'clock, some of the later cars have daylight where the leaders had darkness. Among those to benefit, Renio in Saab 26. Until this. Ignoring a puncher, the Finn had tried to make the end of the stage. The tyre shredded, got snarled round a hot disc brake and caught fire. It takes six minutes to douse the flames, enough to lose sixth place and the chance of challenging the leaders. As the rally nears the end of the first leg, Kinnanen in the Porsche starts to use his power, setting fastest time on three consecutive stages. It's not enough to worry Blomquist, who's still ahead, although another Finn not far behind is Mikola in the Volvo. Shaker Metters, growing confidence in the Datsun, proves it's not only the Finns who can yump. Another British driver joining the fun, Brian Kulchev. that these incredible stages take more than a fair share of skill and daring to drive with the right foot flat on the floor, reputedly the only way to win the Thousand Lakes. Among those who should know, John Davenport, who navigates for Simo Lampinen. I think the outstanding thing about these roads is that they are very fast roads and they're concealing all sorts of dangers and bends and things behind these crests and dips and things that we don't get so much in England and these boys are driving on them right from the time they begin rallying. I mean, if you look at a, something like this, which is the pace notes on the rally, I mean, you can see that every so often there's a thing which says that it's a crest, and then a 50 yards, and then some, some sort of bend, the fast left here, and then over a crest, and then again like that. And all the way through the tests, you know, you find this, that it's behind crest, or over crest, or over jump. You know, these jumps have become famous, and they call them the flying fins because of them. No surprise then that Finland produces champions like Mäkinen, Mikola and Lampinen with almost production line regularity. There are possibilities that Allen is the next one to emerge. He's already as quick as Mikola in, in the Volvo. He hasn't been outside of Finland very much yet. He's got a slight language problem. Um, but Allen is, is the next king to emerge from, from this land of, uh, of competitive motoring. Stage 20, the last section of the first leg. Fastest here is Kinnanen in the Porsche by just one second. This puts him into seventh overall. Nicola, spending more time in the air than on the ground, is two seconds slower than the Porsche, but his performance during the night leaves him fourth overall. The rally leader is still Blomquist, this incredible Swede, perhaps the only man who can beat the Finns at their own game. But Mackinnon in the escort is still just behind. He's cut the lead to 17 seconds and seems poised to challenge later in the rally. A 
Among the strong Saab contingent, Lampinen has succeeded in holding fifth place, despite rolling off the road. The man most Finns have come to see is Marku Allen. In Volvo number 29, he's the most likely to join the ranks of the champions, and at this stage is snapping at Mackinnon's heels in third place. of the Thousand Lakes over here. With 20 gruelling stages now completed, the crews have six hours break here at rally headquarters at Uva Skila. With the bulk of the rally still to come, only a compulsive gambler would dare to predict who the eventual winner is going to be. The only certain fact is that nine times in the past ten years the rally has been won by a Finn and it's quite possible it could happen again. Which raises once more that fascinating question, how do they do it? Why are they such brilliant drivers? So I think maybe they've got something that the English had about a hundred years ago, a sense of adventure and spirit and everything like that. The people in this rally who are probably save all the year to come and do this rally to beat the kings, and the kings are Lampinen, Mackinnon, Mikola. I think we have a very hard competition, you know. I think we have very good 15 drivers here. I used to say, if you miss the curve once, you drop to third place. So it keeps you trying very hard. I don't think it's not exactly like that, but especially in Finland, where you have very, very special roads over the brows and like that. Well, I think it's mostly thanks to the fact that the geography of the Finnish roads are very, is very hard and very much up and down. And it already, as a kid, you get the skill of going as a next to your father's planning sort of thing on these roads and you get the idea of how to handle a car and go with different things when actually the uh, the road is winding up in the in the heights and then going down again last night at dinner Akim Barmbold the German driver asked Hanno Mikola how whether he went absolutely flat on every single special stage right from the start and Hanno said yes of course if I don't he said there'll be sort of 20 newspaper men writing that I've got old and everything like that. He said, and in any case, if I don't go flat, there'll be 20 rally drivers in front of me. Yeah. Buttress between its better known Scandinavian neighbor, Sweden, and the menace of Russia, Finland and the Finnish people seem a curious mixture of the two. Superficial observation reveals a coldness in the Finn that smacks of the distant unfriendliness normally attributed to neighboring Russia. Deeper analysis shows another, more human side, an attitude of live and let live, of laissez-faire, of coming to terms with the business of life minute by minute, with no thought or concern for what lies beyond. Refreshing, confusing, disturbing. It's a situation a foreigner finds hard to comprehend. In relating this situation to rallying, accepted criteria for analysis stumble and fall when considering the Finn in the context of his national sport. There's one aspect of Finnish rallying which is really very difficult to illustrate, a kind of latent something which seems inbred into every Finn, which only finds expression when he gets behind the wheel of a car. Perhaps it's some kind of daredevil. Well, if you want to find out about the uh, Finnish man, I suppose the correct person to ask is the Finnish woman. I don't understand. Oh, that's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> well, maybe because we are just so fantastic. I don't know. <laughs> well, answer that. Well, I've been wondering that myself, too, yeah. that uh, how is it possible? Maybe we have so that the roads are not so very good in Finland. Maybe that's one thing. Those top drivers, 
especially I think they are very careful and they drive just as fast as they can, mm -hmm. but not, they don't take too big risks. <laughs> Saturday afternoon, the second leg. Up at the front, two each from the powerful Saab and Volvo teams hold four of the first five places. The lone escort of Mackinnon still clings to second place. Number 33 helps to break up the Saab and Volvo dominance by holding sixth place. Dry, dusty conditions lead to incredibly fast average speeds, but Saturday evening. If there isn't enough water in Finland, the rain turns stage 23 into another lake. Lampinen's fairly happy in the Saab, although Mackinen's going to have his work cut out to hold second. Now fourth is going to have to slow his pace to contain the power of the Porsche. Sunday morning, Blomqvist has blown up. Mackinnon leads from the young Allen, Kinnanen, Mikola and Lampinen. Can Lampinen, last year's winner, get anywhere near the leader by the finish? Only, more, only five more stages, so I don't think it's so big trouble. I think we have quite a, quite a hard struggle with Hannu here for time to I, I think at the moment we lie only about five seconds apart. Yeah, I think it's Timo, but you know, still five stages to go. You know. Timo Mackinnon, as things stand at the moment, with uh, about three hours to go, you are the provisional leader. That must make you pretty happy, I would think. Yes, we are only five stages and i leading about two minutes and we should get it steady in the finish. Wonders will never cease. A bashful fin. Dry roads on the last stages, Kinnanen uses the Porsche's massive power to take third place by the finish. The battle for the fourth between Mikola and Lampinen ends with this incredible yump. Mikola's landing is so violent it breaks bones in his navigator's back. This means disqualification for the Finn when he leaves his navigator in hospital before reporting to the finish. This last stage drama leaves Lampinen fourth with the Saab.
Lower down the order, Culture registers a very creditable 16th overall as the first British driver home. Somehow the fervour of the competition sparks the imagination of the massive crowd, some more than others. But there's no mistaking the meaning behind the patrolling marshals and their dogs, as drunken spectators are firmly kept in check. One more notch in the marshal's belt, but for Alain in the Volvo, it'll be another year before he can claim the Thousand Lakes title, or no one can catch Mackinnon. The brilliant Finn asserts his mastery with the escort to take first overall and become the first man to win this classic event four times. <laughs> And so it's pretty obvious after this rally of the Thousand Lakes that these Finns really do possess that little bit of extra magic. What is it? A sense of adventure perhaps, a bit of daredevil, the fact they learn their driving under these really unique conditions, probably a combination of all three. But above all, if you're at the top in your own particular sport, you've really got to fight to stay there. And a Finn, more than anyone, can't bear to lose faith.